and welcome to Topper Machine. My name is Josh Topper. Today we are building roller bearing guides or ball bearing guides for a bandsaw, a vertical bandsaw that the customer has. It's been running uh, carbide friction guides. Um, just they don't seem to you know give the uh, security and control that the roller bearings will or ball bearings. Um, so what we're going to start with is we have two different bearings. The first one is the one that the back of the blade runs against. It is a 6200. Um, just a small bearing, single roll ball bearing. The other is a 5201. That is a double row angular contact ball bearing. So there's two rows in there and they're at an angle so that this will actually take um, lateral load as well as axial load. So these are a very good bearing. I've had very good luck with these on multiple things over the years. Um, they just they seem to hold up extremely well on something that's got <laughs> multiple different load patterns. So this is this is our side bearing that uh, the blade, the width of the blade. These are three quarter inch wide blades, so the, these are run up against that. So the body of the, the guide is going to be made with some 2x2x3 two by two by A36 structural angle. Um, it's just what I have right here, right now, ready to go. Um, left over from the job and this we'll, we'll start with. Um, it'll work really good for this project. So this is my Johnson horizontal bandsaw and this is what we're going to base the design of the guide off of. Um, probably not the easiest to see, but this is the exact same bearings. This is what my saw uses. Um, and uh, this, is, this is the basis of the design. Um, so we'll uh, start cutting our material, getting ready, and uh, move over to the mill. So we got our pieces cut at two and a half inches long each. And what we need to do is each bearing gets mounted like this on an eccentric so you can adjust them. Um, let me move it up closer. We need to mill a slot in between those bearings that come up through here. Um, it's going to be a, about a half inch wide. It just basically needs to be enough to clear that other bearing. So let's get the mill set up and let's, uh, let's mill that out. So we've milled our slot in for our bearing clearance, for our, for our back bearing, which we'll ride in here. Now, the next step is to mill a step off for the bearing, the side bearings to ride. And they'll ride right there. So let's do that. pieces that you just saw me make are cut out of a uh, bolt, metric bolt, uh, just because I didn't have any hex stock on hand, otherwise I'd have made my own. Um, but I used metric bolts, um, and these are what is going to be our cam for our bearing, our, our center and our cam. And then when you rotate this, it'll bring it into the blade, in and out. So well, next we'll, uh, we'll drill our hole for the, the cam action.
So there's our cam piece. You can see the offset there. And when you rotate that, that will move that bearing off to the, um, over towards the blade once it's all set up. Now, I'm glad I bought extra bolts to do this because I screwed up. And uh, I'll get in there so you can see that. It uh, was sitting on a chip that didn't come off the top of the vice jaw because I was setting these down in the vice jaw and then up against my stop. And uh, so that one screwed up. It happens. Um, always plan ahead. Um, actually, what my whole plan is here, I'm doing um, one, two, three. I got four complete sets. So I'm doing one set for the customer. Right now, I'm doing one set for my Grob vertical bandsaw, and then I'm going to see if about selling the other sets and maybe making some more. So, if anybody's interested in a set of these these bearing guides, um, feel free to reach out to me, and uh, um, we'll set you right up. And now the next step is to drill and tap um, for the quarter inch bolt that'll operate the cam. So we'll hold the bearing in place and that'll be the pivot for our cam and then that'll lock everything down once once uh, you get it into position. So now I'm going to do that exact same thing on the other leg of it. Um, just to make a mounting bracket um, or a mounting mounting place. So I'm just going to drill and tap it for for five sixteenths holes, two of them, so that when we make the adapters to go on the saw, um, you got something to bolt this to instead of having to weld it or whatever. So it'll just be drilled and tapped for uh, mounting. of these little spacers see them and they go inside the back bearing the one that runs against the back of the blade and then that gets bolted into our fixture back in here like this so the back of the blade runs against this bearing the uh, blade runs between these two bearings and it's just that's it, that simple. So let's make the piece now that goes in here that will get welded in and get that all together and then we're pretty much done.
For a customer and for my own bandsaw, I made uh, four sets, so I've got a couple extra that I could sell. If anybody would be interested, you feel free to reach out to me, um, my website, or call my phone number. Um, and I'm probably going to make more of these. I've got more bearings coming, so I'll probably be more than happy to make a whole bunch more. Um, so just feel free to reach out to me uh, if you're if you're interested. Uh, the uh, one of the next videos we're going to do, I just got this job that came in today with some babbitting and uh, making a whole new sawmill arbor. Um, the arbor is, the, the collar that holds the saw blade is, is shrunk fit onto the arbor, the shaft. So it's, it's quite an intricate process and that job will be coming up here sometime uh, along with a bunch of videos on the mini gray, some other miscellaneous videos coming along. So just stay tuned, subscribe, uh, and uh, just keep an eye out for anything new coming along. I'm going to try to get videos out as, uh, on a regular basis. Um, feel free to follow us, like us on Facebook at Topper Machine LLC. Uh, you can go to our website, www.toppermachine.com. And uh, let's all get out in the shop and let's get it done right the first time.